Hi, and welcome to Allen High School's discussion of reaction stoichiometry and limiting reagents at the 10th grade or pre-AP chemistry level. We're glad you joined us. Uh, we are at the end of this unit. Now, I'm not going to work this first problem for you. You may want to pause the video right now and jot this down, or maybe try it on your own first and then come back and look at these answers. Instead, I want to start with a little bit more challenging problem that I think will illustrate what we're doing in this method. Uh, I call this the BSA method, and that's because we're going to do what I call before, and those are our moles before, so the B stands for before. S stands for shift. We're effectively going to see what happens when we react. And this time we have to react until the limiting runs out. The limiting reagent is the one that runs out first and it limits our maximum or theoretical yield. Now, the first step in this method is to write the balanced equation. I want you to notice that compared to your notes, I have changed the chemical. So we have a better example. So please change that. If this is your year where I changed that, please change this to iron three sulfate. And notice the difference in the balanced equation. So make sure you get the balanced equation right. Now, the second step that we're going to do is also something you know how to do already. And that's convert mass to moles because our chart is all in moles. So I'm going to take my 35 0.60 grams of zinc and I'm going to convert it to moles of zinc and mass to moles use molar mass so 65.37 whoops 0.37 and I get let me erase that a little bit so you can see a little better sorry about that oh Dina you know me right now and we get 0 0.5446 moles. So I'm going to put that up here, 0 0.5446. So before the reaction has had a chance to happen at all, those are my starting moles. Now I'm going to do the same thing with my iron three sulfate. I have 100 grams and I have one mole for every 399.88 grams. And I get for that answer 0 0.2501 moles. Now at the very beginning, I don't have any of my product. So those are zeros. So that's our first two steps. You know how to do that already. Now this next step is a little bit trickier. We need to find out which one of these is going to be an excess. In other words, I'll have some left over at the end and which one is going to be limiting. In other words, it will limit or dictate our maximum product. Now, at your level, I'm going to tell you to guess. And if you get down to the A step and you have a negative number of moles, you guessed wrong. And that's just the simplest way. Some of you can see this. Some of you can look and say, I have 0.25 roughly moles of the iron three sulfate. And you notice I need three times as much zinc. Three times 0.25 is well um, over the 0.546. I need more zinc than I have. And so zinc is my limiting reagent. If you didn't understand what I just said, don't even worry about it. Just guess. All right? So that's our next step. We're going to just pick one to be the limiting reactant. Now, you notice I put a negative on the zinc. And so this is step three. I'm going to put a negative on my iron three sulfate. And that's because you lose reactants. We're going to put a positive and a positive because we gain our products, all right? Now, everything's going to depend on that limiting reagent. So I'm going to put, so step three was to do our signs. So step three, set up your signs. Step four, what I want you to do is we're going to, everything is going to be based on our limiting amount. So I'm gonna put my limiting amount in here. 
all right? So you're going to see we're going to do one caveat, so leave some room there. And they all rely or are dictated by that limiting reagent. Now, I want you to remember when we went from one substance to another substance, remember we always went based on the mole road. So we have to multiply all of these by that mole ratio. So in this case, all right, I've got to multiply the mole ratio. There's a 1 in front of the iron. I'm going to put a 1 over the iron. And then there's a 3 in front of the zinc. So I'm going to put a 3 in the bottom. Now, I would like to label here, but I really don't have enough room. And so what I did is I went from moles of zinc, I went one mole of my iron 3 sulfate for every three moles of zinc. That's all that number represents. So that's the step I did. You notice it's always where you're going to over where you're coming from. So I'm in this column, the balancing coefficient for the substance in this column is on the top. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to multiply by the magic mole ratio. So the shift step, we're going to use that mole ratio. So I look up here on the top, this is where I'm going to, so that's a 3 over where I'm coming from, which is my original limiting amount, and that's 3 over 3. This one is going to be 2. You put the number you're going to on top and the number you're coming from on the bottom, which was a 3. Okay? So that's your fifth step. You multiply by your magic mole ratio. Now, that's the shift or how much is going to react as we go from reactants to product. So now the big question is, what do we have at the end? Well, our limiting runs out. That's the whole purpose of the limiting. Uh, that's the whole definition of the limiting is it runs out. I have this many moles of my iron, 3 sulfate. I end up making 0.5446 moles of my zinc sulfate, you notice this whole table is in moles, 0 0.3631 moles. So that would be, if you want to look at steps, that would be my sixth step. You take B plus S and that equals A. So what's in the B plus your S equals after. Okay. Now, everything in this case is in moles. So now we can go on and answer any question that is asked of us, all right? And so there's going to be a variety of questions that you are asked for um, regarding both product and reactant and the excess uh, limiting reagent the, and the excess leftover. Sorry, lost my train of thought there. Okay, so I'm going to have to clear this screen, but you have all this in front of you. So it says, what is the limiting reagent? Well, we figured out that our limiting reagent was the zinc because it ran out. Now, at that A step, if we had a negative number of moles, we would know that we picked the wrong limiting reactant and we'd start over. Our excess was the iron 3 sulfate, so we have that. All of these answers just now fall into play. It seems a little complicated at first, but it all falls into place very readily. And you get a picture of everything in the solution. So it says how many grams of zinc? Well, by definition, it's the limiting. If there's zero moles, there are zero grams remaining. So now it asks us how many grams of the iron 3 sulfate? Well, we know the moles. If we know the moles, we can get to mass. Mass to moles, use molar mass. So I'm simply going to take those moles of the iron sulfate left over, 
and it was 0 0.0686. I'm going to multiply that now. That's moles. And I'm going to multiply that by the magic mole ratio, or excuse me, by the molar mass, 399.88 grams for every one mole. Okay, and I neglected to do that calculation, but it goes right here. Moles to mass use molar mass. So that's how much is remaining. That's how much was left over after the reaction was done. You know the moles, convert them to mass. Now, my the theoretical yield of my pure iron, I had, just look up the chart. You know how many moles you had of the iron. 0 0.3631 moles of iron. You know moles, you should be able to get to volume if it's a gas. You should be able to get to milliliters using density and molar mass. You know, we've done all of these things already. You should be able to merge them all together. This is simply asking me to go moles to mass, use molar mass. So I'm going to use 55.85 grams of iron for every one mole of iron. And I end up with 20.2 eight grams of pure iron remaining. And that's my maximum yield, my theoretical yield, another word. And the amount that I get is dictated or limited by my zinc because my zinc ran out and went to zero. Okay, this is a little tough at first, but boy, when it falls into place, it is a huge win. And I will tell you the biggest win is right here and when you get to take AP Chemistry with me. And until I see you in class, this is, of course, whoa, signing off.